the memories uh, the memories I have most were how much fun it was to work at, at Bob Clear Mountain's uh, studio and what a great treat it was to be able to to learn from him and to to work with bands like Bon Jovi and and kind of see that level of success I mean uh, both Bon Jovi and Bob Clearmountain are some of you know that's like the top level of of music writing and selling and mixing and and production and all those things they they they're at the pinnacle so it's like it was a real joy for me to to uh, to be there and to and to remember those times it was a while ago now it doesn't it's like a blink of an eye in some ways but but uh, yeah those are my most of my memories are are how much fun it was to to work on it um, and and the music uh, you know oddly enough the music didn't sound dated at all to me I didn't really it didn't I guess it was that change in the 90s that uh, the 90s don't have the the same stigma as the 80s sound does especially on engineering the 80s had a very uh, defined kind of direction people had to go and the 90s still hold up I think I think a lot of the records we made in the 90s still could be played today and not sound uh, dated or old or or like uh, somebody was trying too hard that's what the 80s records sound like to me they sound like people were just trying too hard it's planned to a T I mean every sound and every note and every chorus and I mean that's the that's that type of songwriting well most real proficient songwriters it's not there, there are no accidents you really think about every word and every note and make sure it uh, it comes across the way you want it to come come across sometimes that can happen from improvising and jamming but once you get through that part you have to really structure the song and make sure it works as a as a song especially for what they're going for um, trying to get big radio play and stuff there's there are I don't want to say formulas but there, there definitely are things you have to consider and uh, even sound wise you have to really think about the sound being that kind of sound you can't you can't do like a real out there raw or real weird t turn you have to keep it in that environment and, and go for that kind of audience Bon Jovi um, they were they were pretty straight laced my, my main memory was that Richie asked me for more cassette copies than anybody ever had in my entire life and this is back in the day when cassette was the the reference and and I think they had we had a CD burner but it was a real it took re, it was in real time so it would take an hour to burn a CD and cassettes were real time too and I remember he'd anything any little change that was made he always had me go in the back room the cassette decks making cassette copies of every little change that was made to a mix or or a song or or whatever but um, yeah they were a uh, they were, they were other, I mean, other than that, they were pretty easy to work with. They were very down-to-earth people, yeah. They were, um, uh, I think John had just had, a, he had a couple of young kids at home, and so he was dealing with changing diapers and, um, you know, uh, all those kinds of dad things. And, uh, yeah, they seemed really, really down-to-earth, you know.